What processes and systems should you have in an agency? In today's episode, we're going to be discussing just that, the processes and systems in your agency that you must have to run a profitable agency. With that being said, let's start the show. I want to start there to go from 70 to 90 policies a month to jump up to 150. Let's talk about what was happening at the 70 to 90 Mm. policies a month first. Let's start there and then we'll move on to what shifted to double that. Well, I've always been a believer in Weaver Sales Academy and I've used that for my staff to onboard them. Plug for you guys there. But no, (laughs) seriously, I believed in that, but I was not very good at the consistent training piece after I got them onboarded. So it's like eight weeks of intense training and we're super excited and like, hey, now go sell policies. And I kind of released them to the wild at that point and allowed them to start selling. But the piece that I feel like I was missing, you know, that six to eight months ago was staying consistent on having them continue to invest in their professional development individually. I was good at the team meeting stuff. I was good at the the company corporate training stuff. But as far as allowing them to invest in their own professional development through consistent training online, or even we started reading books together, even through reading books and helping them learn more about the industry. I wasn't great at that piece. We made a switch. We made that more consistent and have held them a lot more accountable to their own personal training outside of that onboarding. So I'd be curious when you implemented the consistent training, did you get receive any pushback from your team? Did you struggle with that consistency piece? Like what have you done to make sure that it gets done and you hold yourself and your team accountable to that consistent training. Yeah. So before I used to be kind of like, hey, make sure you hop on and listen to so and so video or make sure you, you know, listen to that the last podcast on this channel and I would send it to them and I would ask them to do it. After asking them, I would never follow up and be like, "Hey, so what'd you get out of it?" And I would never make sure they did it. So it was just like I would send it to them and then it would go into oblivion. Whereas now We've actually shifted our office schedule on Tuesdays. Our team all takes lunch at the same time. We close our doors. I have for four years, one hour every single day, different than some operations. I know that, but it works really well for us. But on Tuesdays, the sales team now takes lunch first so that they can come back and attend live in-person trainings with your guys' training platform because, hey, watch this when you can wasn't getting me results. Why? Because they weren't watching it. Like, let's be honest. (laughs) Mom tells you to go clean your room. Mom leaves the house. You go clean your room. No, you don't. Like, so I now I'm like, no, Tuesdays, you go take lunch, you come back, we sit and watch this. And then for me, the accountability piece is walking up to them and into their office space after that live training. I know when it ends. What'd you guys get? What'd you take away? Real quick. And that was another hurdle for me to overcome. I hate those 10 to 15 minute meetings because as you can tell, I like to talk and it's not good for me. So 15 turns into 45, (laughs) but I've gotten better at just going in. Give me three things. What'd you take away from that training? Mm. How was Mm. it? And then we move forward with our day. That's powerful. So is there any other training time? Is there any other group time that you guys are talking about personal development, the books that you're reading aside from that Tuesday, that training Tuesday time? Is there any other time that you have that scheduled out? Yeah. Every other Friday, my sales team and I are reading a book together. So every other Friday we sit down and I have notes from my reading of it to ask them about. That's about a half an hour meeting. And then every other Thursday alternates. So one Thursday a week is a team meeting. And the other Thursday, we actually are using another training program, Future Legacy Partners, which is a little more about the balance of of work-life balance and and discovering yourself and your own personality and, and your team as well. So that's every other Thursday alternating from our team meetings. Very cool. So just out of curiosity, what's been like one or two of your favorite team reads? I'm always looking for books to recommend. Well, we're currently reading the Don't Make It Weird book that was recommended by you guys from Colleen. Yeah. So that's been Let's a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and let me like let me just say our team reading that and realizing like the stuff that Colleen shares that people are selling. I'm like, y'all, if they can sell that stuff on the internet, you can sell insurance. Like, come on. <laughs> Don't give me any excuses. 
I know. You think that insurance is the weirdest thing to sell on the internet until you start following <laughs> No Shame Sales Game and you're like, wait a minute. Why am I not talking about life insurance all day long? Like, yeah. this is, yeah, it completely changes the game. I love yeah. that you're a part of it too. That you're a part of the Absolutely. Book club. Whenever we're coaching, if we assign a book, we read it too. So it's built in accountability from us as the coaches and the leaders well, to join right along in on it. I think that it's like anything in a business. If you, the leader, are bought into it, the team will be bought into it. Whereas if you're not bought into it, I truly believe that your team won't be bought into it. That's with everything. So it doesn't matter if it's reading a book. It doesn't matter if it's training. It doesn't matter if it's going out in the community. Like you have to first lead by example. I'm not saying you have to do it your entire career, but you have to lead by example or else it's never going to get done. And we've witnessed that firsthand with agents that train. Like they sign up and then they never hold their team accountable to it. Just like you were saying, Brittany, you do this, do that. They never do it. And it's like, if you would do it with them just for a little bit, just for a few weeks and set the standard, you automatically are going to see increased results and you're going to see your team buy in. And he said something that really stood out. He's like, Michael, everything's going to change once I can just get these processes down, I can get the team and I can actually be the CEO of my business. That's when everything's going to change and I'm going to start making the money that I need to make. Fake news. This is fake news. I don't know, like, is this your territory manager telling you this? Is this your sales leader? Is this mentors? Is this other agents? Like, this is fake news. Processes are not going to save you. Processes are not going to save your business. What is going to save your business is the ability to sell, the ability to sell your vision, the ability to sell your products to consumers, your ability to sell yourself to the community. If you cannot sell, no process matters. You have to be able to sell. If you need money, you have to sell products to equate to commission dollars to be able to pay the bills. I think this gets mixed up because we're looking for an easy out or we think that we need to do more in leadership. And you have to remember that processes don't sell policies, people do. And when you look at it from a leadership standpoint, you can have the best process in place, but if you are not holding your team and yourself to the expectations that come with the process, it doesn't matter. There's so much more than just getting the process and executing the process and hoping for the best. When we were having this conversation, we were getting really fired up because we keep hearing it a lot as the reason why you're not hitting the production that you want, the reason why you're not making the money that you want, the reason why you're not the CEO like you want to be or having the business that you want. And yes, processes are extremely important. And I don't want to skip over that and say, screw processes, you don't need them. You absolutely need them. But you have to think about it like a fast food restaurant. Every fast food restaurant has a process. Every single one of them do. But there are only a few that really stand out that are really changing the game. So it's not just the process. It's the people. You have to remember that you are in the people business. And sales is the root of every single business. It all comes down to sales. So if you are focused on processes and you are thinking that your service process or this process is going to sell something, you really need to look at what is your sales process? And are you, are you holding your team and yourself accountable to the expectation of that process? You don't know what's broken until you start getting in there and selling too. Yeah. You're trying to anticipate all of these problems of like, well, this process, you don't even know mm. what the process is until you start executing. Mm. Mm. You're spot on with this because we're not saying that processes aren't important. You have to have processes to build a business. Like we're not saying that you can't have processes. What we're saying is, is you can have a recruiting process and you can recruit the best talent. But if you can't teach that talent how to sell, they're not going to make it. You can have an appointment setting process where you're meeting with every customer. If you can't have a conversation that sells a product, it's not going to 
matter. You can have the best processes in the world, but you are a sales organization. If you cannot sell, if you cannot teach a team to sell, you are going to struggle as an insurance agency owner. I'm going to go further to say you are going to struggle as a business owner. It doesn't matter what business you run, you have to be able to sell. That's it. Like there are all kinds of great processes from customer service to recruiting to hiring. Retention. Retention. Like pivots. Hiring. Like hiring, uh, meeting with, with your team meeting with customers. These are all fantastic processes. But the number one thing that moves the needle in your business is growth. Without growth, you are not going to be able to maintain or sustain business because you're not going to have enough revenue to pay the bills. You have to have your sales processes on point. And to be able to have your sales processes on point, so we can walk through a couple sales processes, all right? I think that would be good but you have to have the ability yourself. It doesn't matter what kind of sales process you have. I can give you the best sales process. But if you can't have a conversation with somebody and sell them on a product, even the best sales process in the world isn't gonna matter. Like you have to be able to sell. And if you can't sell, you need to contact me right away because you have a major problem as a business owner and sales producer in this industry. You're in sales. You have to be able to sell. We'll be right back.